glory. This is the day the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad because we have a choice. Turn your neighbor and choose. Tell them to choose the right thing. Choose the right thing. How many of y'all want to go to heaven? How many of y'all want to go to hell? You'd have to be an idiot if you want to go to hell, right? <laughs> so you got to choose the right thing, right? Anybody ever make a mistake? Don't raise your hand. <laughs> Thank you. You know, it's okay to make a mistake as long as you correct it. Amen? So you don't want to make the next, uh, do the, the over and over and over. It becomes a real hassle. And it can become very troublesome to your life. Try this again. Sorry. Oh, forget it. Anyhow, God is good all the time. Amen. We're in such a season right now. I love it. Things are really happening. I love when the enemy gets crushed. It's like a football game, you know? You got offense and defense. But there is a problem. Too many people get offended. Hallelujah. Offense. Everyone say offense. Is a killer. Anybody ever been offended? What'd you do with it? <laughs> All right, don't answer and don't tell nobody what you did with it, okay? Offense is an emotion. And it's one of the greatest things, one of the highest level of things that the enemy loves to use. Now, Satan's greatest weapon is deception. Amen? So what he tries to do is cause offense. If he can bring offense in your life, it gets you off course. Many people react to offense. When you react, you sow in the flesh. When you sow in the flesh, you reap corruption. So there's an area where we want to overcome offense. Not only that, we must be prepared. We must be sensitive to these things. So many times offense takes people off guard, and it shouldn't. It shouldn't take us off guard. We should be prepared. The word says that we'll be persecuted. Okay. So if persecution is going to come, that means the opportunity of offense is going to come also. In Psalm 39. Offense. Psalm 39, verse 1. Let's speak it together. I said I will what? Guard my ways, lest I sin with my tongue. I will restrain my mouth with a muzzle, while the wicked are what? Before me. Well, what's the wicked always trying to do? Bring a snare. They're trying to entice you, provoke you. I must mute. I was mute with silence. I held my peace even from good. And my sorrow was stirred up. My heart was hot within me while I was musing. The fire burned. Then I spoke with my tongue. Lord, make me to know my end. And what is the measure of my days that I may know how frail I am? Indeed, you have made my days as a hand breath, and my age is nothing before you. Certainly, every man in his best state is but viper, or vapor, sorry. <laughs> Surely, every man walks about like a shadow. Surely, they busy themselves in vain. He heaps up riches and does not know who will gather them. He says, I guard my ways. I protect my new creation in Christ. By what? By not reacting to the flesh of emotional offense. Not reacting to the flesh of emotional offense. 
You know, many people get offended so easily. A person that's easily offended is not connected. They're not connected to what? God's presence. They're not connected. They're not living from the future. They're living from the past. A person that is easily offended is living from the past more than the future. Does everybody understand that? Why? Because if, when you begin to think about all the things you went through in your past, there's a lot of offenses there. So people are still carrying some of these things. There's times when we got to go to every area of our life, past and present, and begin to expose and remove these emotional offenses, or they'll still eat at you. Is everybody okay? Psalm 1. Offense. It's an, un, it's, it's an ungodly influence. It doesn't mean you won't be offended, but it's what you do with it that makes it ungodly. Amen? But its source is to create, its, its source is evil because it's trying to get me and you out of position. Remember, the enemy's objective is to get you to sow in the flesh. If he can get you to sow in the flesh, you reap corruption. Many people run when they get corrected. They get offended when they get corrected. But not realizing that correction brings protection. Amen? In Psalm 1 verse 1, it says, Blessed is the man... Who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly. Well, the counsel of the ungodly will always promote offense. Nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. But what? His delight is in the truth, in the law of God, in God's word. And in his law, because God's word is his law, he meditates day and night. Why? To know how to answer. To know how to respond to offense. Without knowing how to respond to offense, you will be easily offended. But again, if your connection is not in God's presence, you're not living from the future, you are living from the past of offense. It says, verse 3, he shall be like a what? A tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in its season, whose leaf also shall not wither, and whatever he does will what? Will prosper. Again, ungodly is to react to any, everything. <laughs> and most, many times they're living a life of offense. They react to everything. An individual's always living in a life of offense. They're miserable. They're always looking for something to be offended to. Why? Because that demon of offense is living in them. And it needs to get fed. Remember, demons get fed by emotion. Does everybody get it? So that demon of offense, once a person's been offended and accepts it, and that spirit begins to dwell in them, they become prejudiced. Hypocritical. Very critical. Amen? They're always looking at people's wrongs instead of their rights. They're very angry. Boy, you can't tell them what to do. If they get caught doing something wrong, man, they are angry. And they just justify everything. Why? Because they're carrying that spirit of offense. Remember, this is a ploy of the enemy to try and get offense and make room for a spirit of offense to live in them. Is everybody okay? They can't avoid offense. It's what you do with it. Amen? Everyone is going to be offended at some time. But it's what you do with it. You know, one of the things we've got to do is, in the Word of God, as we meditate on the Word, as we eat the Word, as we begin to decree the Word, it brings us an understanding 
and how to rule over offense, how to respond towards it. When you think about offense, what is offense? It's a breach of law. Think about it. Offense is an area of a breach of law or an illegal act. It's a what? Illegal act. What? Now, we know that when a person gets arrested, there's an offense there, right? <laughs> Why? Because they broke the law. Amen? Well, in the spirit, it's the same thing. Oh, no, people don't get arrested. They just open the door for a demon. Eventually, they get arrested, you know, but no. Because then they usually go back to using dope and everything else. Offense, again, is a breach of law it's, or illegal act. And, and then there's the, when a person gets offended or offense, it's an annoyance, it's a resentment. To take offense usually results in anger. Now, there's a difference between anger of righteousness and anger of offense, because that anger wants vengeance. And there's vengeance. It's usually the person with offenses, they have a self-righteous attitude. One of the things that when offense comes and a person allows it to grab hold of them and opens the door, what it does is it takes them off of the course that God has sent them on for their fulfillment of destiny. They make wrong decisions. They make wrong purchases. They do all kinds of things that's out of order. There is no divine order anymore. It's been removed when there's offense. And God is always trying to intervene to make a way of escape for it, but the hardening of the heart rejects it. And Proverbs 3. So if the enemy knows that you're maintaining your connection, you're being blessed, you're prospering in the areas of the Spirit, do you think he's just going to sit there and let you go? No. If he knows that you're out rescuing souls and so forth, doing things for the kingdom of God, he doesn't just sit there. He'll do everything he can. One of the things about offense, it begins to nullify your identity. It begins to dumb down your identity. And Proverbs 3 and verse 13. Is everybody there? Is anybody there? Okay, good. Be good. Happy is a man who finds wisdom and a man who gains understanding. For her purse proceeds are better than the profits of silver and her gain than fine gold. She is more precious than rubies and all the things you may desire cannot compare with her. Length of days is in her right hand, and in her left hand, riches and honor. Her ways are always ways of pleasantness, and all her paths are peace. She is a tree of life to those who take hold of her, and happy are all who what? Who are retain her. The Lord by wisdom founded the earth, and by understanding he established the heavens. By his knowledge the depths were broken up, and the clouds drop down dew. Again, in this, we've got to be careful because we must ask for wisdom. We must ask for understanding. And these are not from beneath. These are from above. Amen? So in this, it is important that we don't fall into a place where we despise correction, where we don't fall in a place <laughs> where we fall into offense because things aren't going our way. Amen? And the Word even talks about that individuals who de despise the Word will be destroyed. The Word says that those who despise the Word will be destroyed. Think about that. But he who obeys the Word will be rewarded. Why? Because the Word is the guideline. But people think that a Christian just can go do whatever they want. Well, going, ruling, or uh, walking according to the rules that God has predestined for us to follow. 
in Psalm 18. In verse 20. It says what? The Lord rewarded me according to my righteousness and according to the cleanliness of my hands. He has recompensed me, for I have kept the ways of the Lord. In other words, he's followed according to what was required of him. I have not wickedly departed from my God. For all his judgments were what? Before me. In other words, he knew what was going to happen by disobedience. He knew you know, everybody knows. There, nobody in this whole world has an excuse because we're born with it. For all of his judgments were before me, and I did not put away his statutes from me. I also was blameless before him and kept myself from my iniquity. Therefore, the Lord has recompensed me according to my righteousness and according to the cleanliness of my hands in his sight. In other words, he rewards those who reject or don't react to offense in first peter chapter 2 emotional offense first peter chapter 2 and verse 7 you know i hear lots important these are not testimonies but <laughs> I hear a lot of complaints of people being offended in church. Oh, I got offended. That's because you ain't dead yet. Oh, I got offended. That means the person's still too alive. I got offended because this and this and what they said. So what? Don't you remember that little saying when you were a kid? Sticks and stones may break my bones, but your words will never what? Hurt me. Unfortunately, they do hurt because people accept them. See, what you accept, you become. People get angry and say stuff, and the person goes, oh, my God, that's me. Instead of going, no, that's not what Dad says about me. See, that's because not full connected. Again, that enemy throws to, tries to throw these words to get a person offended, and it starts mingling in their minds. Believe me, before B.C., before I was born again, I would think of ways of vengeance. And somebody who did, did something to me, no matter what, I couldn't sleep at night. I would think of ways that wasn't very good. <laughs> and I won't go any further than that. <laughs> anyway, but you know that tendency to get you right in the flesh. I mean, people kill because they've been offended. Think about murder. Where's murder come from? Because they got offended. They're just fighting for their own life. They're in survival mode, not surrender mode. First Peter chapter two, verse seven. Let's speak it. Therefore. To you who believe, what's the word believe mean? Follow. So if you're truly a believer, you're going to be a what? Follower. You can't say you believe and don't follow. In the eyes of God, he says, you're a liar. Therefore, you who believe, he is precious. But to those who what? Our disobedience, the stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone and a stone of what? Stumbling. A rock of what? offense they stumble being why disobedient to the word to which they were also appointed he says but you're a chosen generation a royal priesthood a royal nation his own special people that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light who once were not a people but now the people of god who had not obtained mercy but now have obtained mercy they stumble in offense, not following the word of God. Amen. Again, these are individuals that just refuse to accept correction. Easily offended. In Matthew 16. And 
And they twist the words around. They love to twist the words around. You could try and correct them in love, and they'll say, you can't talk to me that way, or you're judging me. Tell them you are. You're right, I'm judging you. I'm judging your fruit. And if they stink, there's a demon there. Nothing, raw, nothing bad, nothing worse than rotten fruit. Amen? Did you ever eat one? <laughs> Matthew 16, verse 21. Take a bite into one of those worms, you know. <laughs> that came from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. <laughs> Hallelujah, verse 21. Let's speak it together. From that time, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things from the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised the third day. Now, that's powerful. Jesus is telling, look at him, I'm going to get killed. I'm going to have to die, but I'm going to raise. I'm going to get raised. So just hang tough. Don't do anything stupid and don't get offended. Verse 22, then Peter took Jesus aside and began to rebuke him, <laughs> saying, Far be it from you, Lord, this shall not happen to you. And, Je and Jesus returned, and he said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are an offense to me. Why? For you are not mindful of the things of God, but the things of men. You want to be an offense to God? then we need to be more mindful of the things of God than the things of men. See, more people are men-pleasers than God-pleasers. In verse 24, and Jesus said to his disciples after he rebuked Peter, I'm sure Peter got offended right away. If anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For everyone, whoever desires to save his life will what? Lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. This is something important. Jesus was giving a correction here. He's saying, look it, be sensitive to this. If you're trying to save your life, you know you're in the wrong condition. Now, don't get me wrong. If you fell off a cliff or in the water or something, it doesn't mean you're going to lay there and die, you know, or drowned. You're going to save this temple. Amen. He's talking about you personally. You. It's your old life. Living for yourself instead of for him. Living for the kingdom instead of for your own kingdom. Stop building your own empire and start building his kingdom. Amen? That's what he's talking about. If you find yourself in a condition where you're in survival mode and fighting for your life instead of surrendering it, then you know there's been a disconnect. Amen? Is everybody okay? Oh, hallelujah. He says, this is powerful. He says, for what profit is a man if he gains the whole world and loses his soul? In other words, if he gains all the material and loses his soul. Or what will a man give in exchange for his soul? For the Son of Man will come in the glory of his Father with his angels, and then he will reward each one according to his works. Romans 16. So they were not mindful of the kingdom rules, principles, integrity, and business. They were out of order. Everyone say out of order. Oh, hallelujah. You know, I posted something on Facebook. I, would, I saw this um, page that was promoting, uh, I guess, the uh, impeachment of Trump and so forth. There was an organization out of Florida. So I was brought to it. And, and I posted something on it. Basically, it was a warning from heaven that those who promote and vote for the things that are displeasing to God will not enter, will be separated from his eternal presence forever. 
And uh, people were offended. <laughs> I wanted to react. You know, so my only response was, I don't answer junk mail. And I left it at that. <laughs> but yeah, I had threats and all kinds of stuff. And then I got a thing from Facebook saying, you, you can report these threats and whatever. <laughs> but you know, the Lord says, bless and forgive those and coals of fire will come on them. So what the heck? I forgave them and blessed them. Now I got to deal with my father, not me. <laughs> Glory. Romans 16, verse 17. Let's speak it. Now I urge you, brother, note those who cause divisions and what? Note them. Don't take notes from them. Amen? Note them. Let me see, how do you do offense? <laughs> so I urge you, brethren, note those who cause divisions and offense contrary to the doctrine which you learned, and what? Avoid them. Man, you know somebody that's miserable and always offended? Stay away from them. You may leave them a note. Your note. Amen? Just put on there, warning from heaven. <laughs> Avoid them. In verse 18 it says, For those who are such do not serve the Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly or their flesh. By smooth words and flattering speech deceive the hearts of the simple. Wow. He said, Avoid them. It's amazing to me how many people, it's like people that are offended hang around with those that are offended. And their demons just feed one another. And eventually they're going to get offended with each other. Matthew 24. Note those who create offense and divisions. Avoid them. In other words, don't provoke them. Amen. Amen. Avoid them. I know a lot of you people are thinking about some people right now, but man, I got to get away from this person, you know. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> I saw all kinds of stuff flying through the air here. <laughs> Avoid them. <laughs> some of you are already thinking about how the note you're going to write. Matthew 24, verse 3. Let's speak it. Now as Jesus loves, the disciples came to him privately saying, tell us when these things will be and what will be the sign of your coming and the end of the age. And Jesus answered and said to them, he said, listen, take heed that no one deceive you. For many will come in my name saying, I am a Christian, or I am the Christ, and will deceive many. And you will hear wars and rumors of war. See that you are not troubled, for these things must come to pass, but the end's not yet. For nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. And there will be famines and pestilence and earthquakes in various places. Has that been happening? Yes, tremendously. And these are the, what they call the beginning of sorrows. He said, then they will deliver you up to tribulation. Why? Because you got beginning of sorrows and tribulation and great tribulation. And they will attempt to kill you. And you will be hated by all nations for my name's sake. And then many will be what? Offended, will, be, will betray one another and will hate one another. Then many false prophets will rise up and deceive many because lawlessness will abound. The love of many will grow cold. But he who endures to the end will be saved. Man, we're seeing this all over. I mean, there's so much hatred. It's amazing to me where there's 
I just saw on the news where this teacher separated the kids in her class. All those who believed in God and all those who didn't. And all those who believed in God, she rebuked and threatened them. It was amazing to me. And they were politica, politically motivated. All of these kids in her class told me she would prevent them from doing all kinds of stuff and whatever. They finally reported her. And now she's been suspended. I'm, why wasn't she arrested? They do a lot of suspension, no arrest. They need to arrest the Democratic Party. Everyone in it. Why? They're promoters of wickedness, evilness, and violence. People don't get it. But we know that Many will be offended. They will react. <laughs> and we see that happening, especially when they get caught. Amen? Second Corinthians 4. Second Corinthians chapter 4. In verse 7. Is everybody there? Good. Let's speak it together. <clears throat> but we have this earthen treasure, this treasure in earthen vessels, that the excellence of the power of God may, may be of God and not of what? Us. We are what? Everyone say hard-pressed. Hard pressed on every side, yet not crushed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Struck down, but not destroyed. Always carrying about in the body to die into the Lord Jesus, that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our body. For we who live are always delivered to death for Jesus' sake, that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our mortal body. We are hard-pressed with what? Attacks and trials, disappointments. Amen? Discouragements, accusations. We're hard-pressed on every area. Well, again, the whole thing is about the enemy trying to prevent us from maintaining course in whatever area that he has us, God has us doing. He wants to disconnect us from the throne of glory, the tree of life, the anointing of Christ. Again, if you're not connected to those areas, the anointing of God, his presence, his power and truth, which is the anointing, offense will be easily accepted and not rejected. See, the enemy likes to pound a person. He starts off with a seed and then pounds it in, pounds it in, pounds it in so he can plant more seed until that person finally reacts unless that individual has rejected right from the beginning the voice of the enemy of offense. In Psalm 20, uh, Proverbs 29, Proverbs 29. So when there's a lack of connection, a lack of God's presence, a lack of revelation, because in God's presence there's revelations, that's like eternal encouragement. Man, you get eternally encouraged, you stay connected to eternity. When a person lacks eternal encouragement, <laughs> called revelations, something occurs in verse 18. It says where there's no revelation to what? 
people cast off the restraints, restraints of the flesh. But happy is he who keeps the law. No connection, no revelation, no restraints of the flesh, especially against emotional offense. Offense is a false fulfillment. It's a false fulfillment in an emotional torment. I'm going to share one of the fruits of offense, anxiousness. A person that's always anxious is always offended. Again, offense is a false fulfillment and emotional torment. The fruit of offense is anxiousness. Because to react brings a person into a place of anxious. When we respond, we go into a place of waiting on the Lord. What? For correction and direction. In Philippians chapter 4. Ever know anybody that's anxious? Please don't mention their name right now. Anybody you know that's very anxious is always easily offended. Because the fruit of offense is anxiousness. And they're unstable. They tell you one thing and do another. And they maintain their wrongful excuse <laughs> when they get caught. They do a lot of butt ministry. But, but, but. In verse 4, Philippians 4, 4, what does it say? Rejoice in the Lord when? Always. Again, I say rejoice. And let your gentleness be known to all men. That word gentleness also is associated with peace. Because the opposite of anxiousness is peace. And again, you can't have these things without being connected to the presence of God. It's impossible. Let your gentleness be known to all men. The Lord is where? At hand, that you're in his presence. And his presence is in you. But be anxious for everything. For nothing. Be anxious for nothing. But in everything by what? Prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your requests be made known to God. Remember, prayer connects you, doesn't it? You're communicating. You're praying. It's not a want list. It's a communication. People think that prayer is nothing but a want list. Oh, Lord, I need a Mercedes today. Or I need this, or I need that, or I need this, or whatever. And again, prayer is not a want list. It's an intercession. It's a first attack. It's a relationship. Amen? Be anxious for nothing. <laughs> it says, rejoice in the Lord always. Let your gentleness be known. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, prayer and supplication. And the what? Peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds through Jesus Christ or Christ Jesus. Be anxious for nothing. Lack of connection to receive correction, direction, which brings protection. And the Lord says, depart from evil. Amen. Make no place for the devil and expose darkness. Three things. Depart from evil. Make no place for the devil and expose the darkness. That's what we're supposed to do. We have a life in that. We live that. Why? Because we want to maintain that connection. Remember, the enemy's focus is to get you disconnected, get you reconnected to doctrines of demons. Get you reconnected to your past. Get you reconnected in a place of fear, anxiety, stress. Get you reconnected in an area of survival mode and offense mode. He'll do everything he can. If he can't come in one way, he'll try another way. In 2 Peter chapter 1. But we must be sensitive and recognize Vengeance is the Lord's. 
Amen. Vengeance is the Lord. You may not see it on your enemy right now, but it's coming. Second Peter chapter one verse two. Let's speak it. Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the what? Knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. Now what is grace again? God's plan of what? Escape. Amen. So what is he saying? He said you're getting, the, if, he's saying increasing the knowledge of God, the plan of escape. And verse 3, and his divine power has been given to, given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue, by which have been given to us exceedingly and great and precious promises, that through these you may be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through loss. Now let me ask you this. Would the divine nature be offended? No. In other words, it, would, it doesn't say it won't be attacked with offense. Amen. But it's not going to react to offense. Only the human nature will. Because the human nature is self-surviving. The divine nature can't die. And that's a place where identity is important. The devil tries to kill you. You can't kill what's already dead. Amen? Because you're always alive in Christ. Is everybody okay? Oh, hallelujah. Let's go a little further. But also for this very reason, giving all diligence, add to your faith, virtue to virtue, knowledge to knowledge, self-control to self-control, perseverance to perseverance, godliness to godliness, brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness, love. For if these things are yours and abound, you will neither be what? Barren or unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. For he who lacks these things is short-sighted even to blindness and has forgotten that he was cleansed from his old sins. Therefore, brethren, be even more diligent to make your call and election sure. For if you do these things, you will never what? Stumble. You'll never be put out of order. For so an entrance will be supplied to you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Very powerful. For this reason, I will not be negligent to remind you always of these things, though you know and are established in the present truth. Remember, his divine power comes from his presence. His divine nature comes from his glory. Understanding the plan of escape is vital. It's in the knowledge it's of his purpose for me and you. It will keep us in line so that we can recognize offense. We can see it coming. And you can smell it. James 1. Smells like mildew. Hallelujah. James 1.21. People get offended because God hasn't answered them yet. I, I hear from you, oh, he never answers me. Ooh. And he never will. But an attitude like that. Verse 21, let's speak it. Therefore what? Lay aside all filthiness and overflow of wickedness and receive them with meekness the implanted word which is what? Able to save your souls. But be doers of the word and not hearers, only deceiving yourselves. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man observing his natural face in the mirror. For he observes himself, goes away, and immediately forgets what kind of man he is. That's identity loss. But he looks into the perfect law of liberty, which is deny yourself, pick up the cross, and follow. And continues in it, and is not a forgetful hero, but a doer of the work. This one will be blessed in what he does. If anyone among you thinks he's religious and does not bridle his tongue, but deceives his own heart, this one's religion is useless. 
pure and undefiled religion before God and the Father is this, to visit orphans and widows in their trouble and keep oneself unspotted from the world. In 2 Timothy chapter 2, and we'll close here. Be a doer of the word, not just a hearer. The word says forgive so you can be forgiven. Emotional offense. 2 Timothy chapter 2. Everybody there? Hallelujah. I won't be offended. <laughs> Hallelujah. Let's speak it. Therefore, if anyone cleanses himself from the what? Latter what? Offenses. I'm telling you, people still are holding on to them. They're still bitter. But you don't know what, I, what they've done to me, and I don't care. And neither does Dad. He's saying, let it go. Move on. People still holding it. Reminding people, do you remember what you did? Oh, shut up and get behind me. I mean, this is an area where people are still bound. Believe me, offense will bring bondage. Therefore, if anyone cleanses himself from himself, from latter offenses, he will be a vessel for honor. How many of y'all want to be a vessel for honor? Sanctified and useful for the master, prepared for every good work. But avoid, here we go again, avoid, foolish and what? Ignorant disputes, knowing that they what? Generate strife. And a servant of the Lord must not quarrel, but be gentle to all, able to what? Teach, patient, in humility, correcting those who are in opposition. In humility, not in arrogance or pride. Not in a high attitude. I am better than you. That's not what it's about. It should be all in love. Amen? Why? In humility, correcting those who are in opposition of God, perhaps will grant them what? Repentance, so that they may know the truth and that they may come to their senses and escape the snare of the devil, having been taken captive by him to do his will. Let me tell you, when offense comes, it messes your senses up. Man, you're scattered like crazy. Nothing is, everything is blocking. It's like everything has just been blocked. And it's hard to discern. It's hard to see. It's hard to receive. But that's where you have to run to the throne and not the phone. Don't call everybody about how you've been offended today. And get the heck off a of flesh book. I, don't tell everybody about all your offenses. She's sick. We don't want to hear about... All that stuff. <laughs> Although some people love it because they're ones that are offended. They look for it on Facebook. Oh, I need to get fed. I'm going to have a full course meal of offense today. And then I'll have some dessert. They're miserable. Amen? So examine your past. Examine your circumstances. Examine your hurts. Examine all of your offenses that have occurred. And sever the emotional attachments. Forgive, bless, go on. It doesn't matter. Amen? And listen, the enemy, just because you did, did that one time doesn't mean he's not going to approach you again to try and reconnect that offense. Amen? He's going to always come to you and tell you, do you remember? Oh, he remembers everything of your past, but God doesn't. Remember that. He says anything that's of the blood, he has forgotten. 
Only the powers of darkness, the devil, and your old man remembers the past. If you're truly walking in the newness, you're connected to the future, you're not easily offended. It doesn't mean that it won't come, but you won't react to it. Amen. You'll respond to it in the correct way. Forgive and bless. Amen. Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. We thank you for the heavenly warning this morning. <laughs> because obviously we need to get cut loose of offense. And that offense will come even stronger. It tells us, warns us, many will be offended in the last days. And we are definitely in the last days. So we ask for your discernment, for wisdom and understanding. And to keep us connected, filling us with your spirit. And empowering us that we may say yes to you and no to any temptation or attack of offense. That we may live a life that is honorable and pleasing to you. In Jesus' name. Everybody say amen.